What a wonderful audience here. I see a lot of creative minds, our leaders, artists, our musicians, and athletes. But, and the but, in the eyes of our parents, most of us are decided, determined, and defined to become an engineer and a doctor. Isn't that true? And isn't the context? We all did our homeworks yesterday and we score marks for tomorrow. So, here in fourth, my TED talk will revolve around four topics. The first one is the root cause, second is the solutions around the root cause and the future of engineering education in India. In defining the above, I'll share my story of becoming a teacher from an engineer. And so for that, the amount of work we have done as a team at back in my company uh, to create employability for many graduates coming out of the engineering colleges. So let's understand the problem which exists possibly today. So I, I, I don't need to rephrase that. Possibly, I think that's how you hit a lot of traffic every day in the morning when you come to college, when you go to schools and stuff like that. So this is what the statistics of engineering graduates looks like in India. So we have close around 3,289 engineering colleges and universities in India. So we close around 15,53,000 engineering seats available uh, for someone to pick it up. So we, we have close around 7,50,000 engineering graduates who come out every year from engineering colleges and universities across India. So in a, in a bigger picture, we produce highest amount of engineering graduates every year compared to the United States, which puts around 1,20,000, and compared to China, which puts around 6 lakh. So if you could see, we're a very young nation, which you would have aware about. The average age of Indian is around 29. Comparatively to China, it is 39. And United States, it is 38. And in uh, Japan, it's around 49. So we have enormous amount of engineering graduates, not only as a graduate, but a lot of other creative minds, athletes, musicians, everybody gathered around to make the country's economy better and the way of living better. So isn't it that great, isn't it that great to say, Mera Bharat Mahane? For sure, definitely it is. So, but there is another side of the coin, which you see possibly today, or if you would be an enthusiastic student to become an engineer after you're 12. So, there may be a lot of seats available. There may be a lot of uh, people and colleges out there. But if you see the amount of graduates come out, and what is the quality of education which we really get at engineering colleges is, is really, really panicking. If you see some quotes here, they may be from newspapers, which may not be trustworthy, but there are data available, if you see from McKinsey, which is a trustable source of information, and also Ministry of Human Resources and Development. We say around 7% uh, of the engineering graduates are employable, only 80% of the engineers are not fit for uh, gradu uh, jobs after the graduation. So anything, anything which you put across here, so it's close around 80% of the engineering graduates who come out every year is not really fit for engine. It, it, they're not really fit for to hold a job. So it means that possibly if you clock around seven lakh engineers graduating every year, so you have close around six lakh of engineers or a five and a half lakh of engineers who are really not sure what to do after their engineering. So maybe one among us here today, or maybe a lot of our friends and families back in there in the homes have the same problems after they graduate. They're really not sure what they want to do. And yes, it's a wonderful country, but we do have a lot of problems which exist through the engineering education in India. So what really happens after you graduate? So the circumstances which you possibly run through, you're clueless about the opportunities you could try. See, if your parents have never told you that, you know, you go and study in a green world, what would, have been, what would, have, what would have been your option? You're not sure, possibly. The same way what happens here is you study and you graduate, but you're really not sure what kind of opportunity is available for me to kind of start my career after my graduation. And uh, someone spends an, you know, years after their graduation to, to start something as a career. And for many of them, 
they ended up in odd jobs, which possibly not in engineering after the studies in engineering. So which costs close around six to 15 lakhs to study in engineering in India today. So you have such a financial burden on you after you graduate and you really have to repay it back. Maybe your family is not ready for it or you're not even having a job to repay that back money to a bank loans or anything which you've taken. So if you sum up all in place, you know, there's a wonderful side of the one coin, there's another bad, bad side of the other coin. So which I personally define, it's not a failure of individuals who take up engineering, but it's a failure of the system which is there in India, which is causing the people to fail every day. So that's a basic statement which is out there. So now I come to a part of it, how it felt for me being there as a graduate who had the same situation after my graduation. So I'm a mechanical engineer by profession. At 2012, June, I graduated. It took me seven months to pick up my first odd job. And I sustained for four months in my first odd job. And my second odd job was for, for a close around nine months. By the time I have clocked close around two years after my graduation, and my odd job which I was working was a call center. And I was never sure, and I was never, never really happy with what I was doing, because I dreamt to be a design engineer after my graduation. That's what I wanted to be an engineer after my graduation, but what I was doing was really put me into a devastation. Every day after my, uh, after my uh, uh, job, I would come back and I would put a couple of tears and say, is it really I wanted to do? Is it really what I'm happy to do with uh, as a call center job? So there was this word by a person, T.T. Uh, T. Rangarajan. It says that impracticality, impracticality is a vocabulary of a mediocre who doesn't want to take the responsibility of implementation. So I would recode it. Impracticality is a vocabulary of a mediocre who doesn't want to take the responsibility of a implementation. So I thought, what the hell am I doing? I could take a chance back. Why can't I just spend some time extra and see, figure out what I can be? So I took a six months break. I have undergone a couple of courses and trainings in place, and that gave me a U-turn in my life. After a couple of courses in place, I got a job in Mercedes. We were the team of engineers who designed uh, bumpers for AMG GTR. And uh, I worked in the United States for Chrysler, where we designed a couple of seats for a Jeep Wrangler, which, were, which is being sold in the United States. So the life was getting back. And, and you know, I was really enjoying, and I was in a dream job where I thought about being to be when I was in engineering. So everything was in, was in a well-framed structure. So when I sat back and thought through, okay, what really has made me to uh, get this job, which I, have, I wasn't able to get when the, after the graduation of my engineering. So and also a lot of my juniors kept calling me and, and asking me uh, what I should do after my graduation. So there has been a circumstances in which, which when I sat down and I connected dots back and forth, and when I was able to realize, you know, it's the same thing as me uh, felt for two years after my graduation, there are five lakh engineering graduates who feel the same sense of pressure, who see, who see no direction, who see no guidance after graduating what they have to do. So that is, that is the problem statement which I identified myself. And then, okay, I, I wanted to address this whole as a part of it. So that is when the story has begun. And I know in the weekends, I, I started a training center back in my home. Uh, so then I went there, I, I, I used to teach a couple of uh, students. My first batch of students were like you know, eight people. So they were from, they're from a tier two city in, in Karnataka. So I, I trained them for close around uh, two months. Right after the, after the completion of two months of a course, all of them were able to get a job. And they're not really brilliant. They had not like, you know, big grades in place. But because of right education uh, they've gone through, or possibly right skill set they've taken in, into them, in the span of two months, right after the two months, they're able to get jobs. And comparatively, there are 80 other students in the same classroom, which are still struggling to do it. And that gave me a lot of confidence to, to step ahead and think, OK, if I could bring a change in eight people and their lives and their career, why can't we do it for so many people? So that's when I quit my job in 2017, and we started a company called Competences Factory. So it's all about creating capabilities for individuals such they can become career-oriented or unemployable, or maybe they can individually drive themselves later. So that's what a bit of my story is. And later, I would, I would call it as a bottom line, which really affects why somebody picks up an engineering. 
So which, which I could first and initially pick it up as a parenting and early education. This is the root causes possibly where we fell in wrong in the education system possibly we have today. The first thing is the parenting and early education. When I took up my engineering, I was really not sure what is engineering is really about. And somebody told me maybe computer science and you know, information science is majorly for a, a, a woman. That's what my perception of engineering was. And civil engineering is too dirty and you've got to stand in the uh, sunlight and you've got to see all these things. I was not prepared for it. And let's pick up mechanical engineering where you can repair some cars and bikes. And that's all the definition of engineering when I knew I wanted to pick an uh, engineering degree as my profession. It, it's somebody else, honestly, who picked me an engineering degree and I live with it. So that's what really happened with my parenting and an early education, which was not guided and I was not exposed to kind of an opportunity which is really available for me. And that's what I see to address uh, from the parent side and also in the early stage education, that somebody need to be addressed about what kind of opportunities that they really have. So that's the first part of uh, bottom line. And the next part of bottom line is higher education and curriculum and the learners. So what really happening at higher education is, if you see about an higher education or an education as such, it should build a competency in a person and capability in a person. So possibly what we see today, our engineering education system is doing is, there is a defined curriculum and, and you just have to study the books and you have to write an examination. Possibly if you spot a good score, it is really not tough to do that. So that has been need to be addressed. There has to be a creative thought process that, is, that need to be implemented at an education, at a higher education level, where we, where we make a curriculum more attractive for somebody to learn and enjoy it. And as such as a learner, which I possibly interact with a lot of students, possibly it's around 10,000 people I've interacted in the last two years, I don't see a lot of people are really interested because you know you, you have been pushed by somebody to study engineering, so you may not be very interested to study engineering. So which I feel is if you could address that part in the parenting and early education, so you get a filter students back into the higher education, so you have a proper definition of why we need to, really need to do an engineering in place. And then we say industry, academy, or disconnect. What exactly this mean by industry, academy, or disconnect is, you know, after our graduation, where do we really end up? We end up in a job. We end up in a corporate lifestyle in place. So it means that we're supposed to be prepared for what is really going to be a tomorrow. So it means that the, as a part of the whole education system, the industry is one of the pillar. So what which we see in India really is not really industries come along with an academia and try to engage themselves and provide an opportunity for graduates to kind of involve in research, studies, and possibly also a knowledge transfer from industry and academia. That's been another story, what I call it as a bottom line. And the, the fourth thing is, exposure and opportunities to express and possibly I sum up in part of the gamification and outcome based learning. So when we see about for example if, you, if it, there is no opportunity given to you that to express your talent or you know, ensure that okay, you, can, you can do a lot of things in place, you really can't bring up that creativity out in place. So you have to be given with a lot of opportunities. It means that the curriculum has to be adopted with to provide a lot of opportunities. Because if you also see a statement recently from a lot of researchers we miss an higher education, sorry, higher order thinking when you come out of the graduates. It means that you and I are not meant to be an engineer, work in an IT company, possibly you get a part of the project which you execute and you really feel happy, but you're really not sure what is this whole project is all about. And how do you understand this project is all about? You know, which you possibly see in US education, you see a lot of products coming out in Israel also today. It's because that they give an opportunity to, for you to execute a bigger thing and see a problem in such a way where you alone can solve those problems in place. So that gives you a higher order thinking in place. That's something which is possibly right now missing as a part of the education. And the third thing is involvement of the government. So if you see today, that's where possibly all the branch root out. So we need to have a right system and a right monit monitoring approach to be available that our engineering education system become more viable and more adoptable in nature. Others, we, we, here we have today a lot of politicians open a lot of colleges in place and really have no direction in terms of how they lead the college. So it becomes very much ensuring that if the government ensures that there is a right amount of uh, transparency available, quality of the education available, so we will be able to enable a lot of better engineering graduates coming out every year. And the last. So what's the future? Okay, so let's say there's a lot of problems existed and we know there's a lot of problems existed, but how do we solve those problems? And what really industry is shaping as an higher education for tomorrow? So 
the code which says here the first one, it's not always mera beta engineer banega. So the parents really need to think out of uh, and that, okay, I will define my engineer. Maybe you, you should have seen a Three Idiots movie. It's defined before that, you know, my son will become an engineer. So possibly that stereotype will go away uh, down the line in place. And the next thing is degree may not be a criteria for the job selection. If you possibly see today, you know, why you need to have a degree? Because somebody picks you with that mark sheet at the industry saying that if you have this degree, okay, you can come to an interview. Imagine a day tomorrow, it's already been happening in other countries, that there is no need to that you have to have a certification that you, know, you, you can apply for a job. So you just need a skill that you require to have that you can get a job in place. So that's what the possibly industry is leading tomorrow, that if, if the companies come up together and tell that you know, we don't really care about your engineering degrees or any degree for a case, it's all about the skill which you care about, so possibly we'll have a crumple down in the whole ecosystem that possibly we call as an higher education. And the last but not the least, e-learning will become a tool for higher education. What exactly I mean is possibly so you may not have a good teacher today who teach you the right subject. But today we have enormous amount of resources available in the form of e-learning today. You have best universities offering the courses online, maybe at a bit of a prices in place. But it's still, if you like to learn the subject, it doesn't really matter. You can pick it up from anywhere. But you possibly see today in, in foreign universities, you can just pick up a one of the subjects from online and that could be considered as part of your curriculum and you have a, grade, you have a grading system for that. So that's what it adopts there as an e-learning so that a lot of people start to pick up the courses online or you would have one good teacher who could teach to millions of people. So that, that's what is coming up as a whole part of it. So if I sum up all in place, the whole thing, I become a teacher or I found a purpose to me becoming a teacher is to create a possible opportunities for engineering graduates who are devastated, who are left behind that not sure what they really want to become after the graduation. That's, that's what found me a purpose for me to become a teacher. So possibly down the line in the last two years, we transformed around like a 500 plus graduates to become employable. We see their lives being better today. That we would like to impact more and more people. We would like to impact because there are 5 lakh graduates come out every year in place. So we've been coming up with an amazing ideas in place and we're all welcome to participate as a part of it. And that's where I end my presentation. Thank you very much.